welcome back to the Actory Magic Channel. I'm Steve, the Actory. Today we're talking about Strephon, Mauro Progenitor. Pretty sure I'm saying that wrong. But before we get into him, I want to let you know we're going to have a combo at the end of the video. We typically do. Anyway, stay to the end and see what I got. All right, Strephon, let's check uh, him out. He is a 4-drop, 3-2 Vampire Noble with flying. He says, at the beginning of your end step, create a blood token for each player who lost life this turn. Let's do a review. What is blood tokens? They are brand new. They are uh, token artifacts that say one generic tap and discard a card. Sacrifice this artifact. Draw a card. So there's a lot going on here. So this one, it puts an artifact into play. It discards a card. It sacrifices an artifact. An artifact is going to the graveyard. And then it's also drawing us a card. So there's so many different aspects of this card, of this type of token, that work pretty well with a lot of different types of decks. Uh, <clears throat> it's getting stuff into your graveyard for you. It's also having a uh, permanent leaving the battlefield if there's some kind of trigger there or maybe an artifact touching the graveyard, an artifact coming into play, because whenever you get those blood tokens to begin with, there's so many different avenues that you can build around blood tokens. But let's talk about the rest of him. He says, whenever you tax, you may sacrifice two blood tokens. If you do, you may put a vampire card from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking, it gains indestructible until end of turn. So what's interesting about this is we're encouraged to play really big, beefy, vampires and the pre-con is completely chock full of big beefy vampires so let's talk about other stuff that we can do to support those vampires all right we got a mad lad here this guy is a one drop one two that says whenever he attacks each opponent loses one life yes please you're probably gonna lose him but you're certainly gonna trigger strephon <laughs> and so he's just so good just so good you probably attack the player that doesn't have any reason to block that's the one we're gonna swing at all right, let's talk about making people lose life. Okay, so there's a, different, a bunch of different cards that are enchantments that I think that you should probably take a look at because they aren't creatures, specifically because they aren't creatures, because these will help keep consistent life loss going so we consistently get those blood tokens. Underhanded Designs is a one black, one generic enchantment. It says whenever an artifact enters battlefield under control, you may pay one generic. If you do, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. Cool. You can sacrifice uh, underhanded designs to destroy target creature. Activate this ability only if you control two or more artifacts for a black and a white. Very, very utilitarian kind of card. And it's always triggering based on artifacts entering uh, the battlefield under your control. So it, you can trigger it whenever Strephon is putting those blood tokens into play. But in order for Strephon to put anything into play first, we're going to need something else like Faith of the Devoted or some other way of putting an artifact in play. Faith of the Devoted says a black and two generic says whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one generic. If you do, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. If we're using our blood tokens to draw and discard or discard and draw, this is going to be able to trigger for one more generic mana. And then we're going to make each opponent lose a life, which is very, very good. Uh, Sanct Sanctum of Stone Fangs, I think, is the best of these three styles of cards. It says one black, one generic. It says at the beginning of each pre-combat main phase, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life, where X is the number of shrines you control. This, I think, is just a really, really good idea because it's always going to trigger Strephon. It's going to hit all your opponents. It's going to gain you a tiny bit amount of life. I don't really think that you need to run any of the other Sanctums or Shrines to make this a really, really good card. Although the Black Shrine, uh, the Honda, the Black Honda would be really good here. Um, going back, I want to make sure, let's look at Strephon. It says at the beginning of each of your, at the beginning of your end step. So you can't get this stuff to trigger on your opponent's end steps, which is kind of a, a bummer. All right, let's get on to honorables number two. So this is more centered around if you're building into that discard avenue, that draw discard thing. So bag of holding is a really interesting card. It says whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. Tap two, tap it, draw a card, then discard a card. Okay, fine, whatever. Pay four and tap. Sacrifice bag of holding. Return all cards from bag of holding to their owner's hand. This was not mentioned on EDH Rec, but I wanted to bring it up to you because I thought it was so good. It's such a powerful card, and it's a very underrated card. I think, though, you can get left holding the bag if somebody decides to blow it up and you've got some big creatures underneath there, but you're not hurt at all by having this in play 
and then you can just use it to one draw a discard or if you're not going to discard your big big beaters to uh say strephon or a blood token then you can just let like just not do it that way okay we'll, we'll talk about that twi. okay brawlin scar sky shark right writer is a four drop three three human shaman for uh red and three generic it says uh whenever you discard a card put a one counter on brawlin sky shark and it deals one damage to each opponent again giving us more damage triggering uh our strephon once again target shark gains trample of the villain return there's no sharks in red and black that i'm aware of oh they're all in blue anyway archfiend of ifnir not a vampire but he's really cool he's a two black three generic demon five four Whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a negative one-one counter on each creature your opponent's control. So this is really, really good if you're going to go heavy into the discard draw card route. Uh, all of these cards are. So that's why they get the honorable mention, and they're not the main focus of the deck. The main focus of the deck is vampires, but I wanted to bring these up in case you wanted to go that route. All right, let's go. Let's protect our commander. No one's unfamiliar with Whisper Silk Cloak and Lightning Greaves, but I do want to remind you it's a good place. This deck is a good place to put them because your commander is the kind of beating heart of this deck and we want to keep them alive. It's already got Swiftfoot Boots in the pre-con, but Whisper Silk Cloak and Lightning Greaves are not included, and I think these are both really, really great includes in your build. Uh, Palace Siege is the double black three generic enchantment. It says, when it enters battlefield, choose cons or dragons. Uh, I'm going to choose... Actually, it really doesn't matter which one you choose. I think both of them are good in this deck. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, you return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Cool, because we're discarding cards. Or dragons at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life, which will also trigger Strephon. So you can choose whichever mode you want to. If you need one of those modes to return those creatures, great. If you need one of those modes to start hitting your opponent so you get blood tokens, fantastic. This is an excellent card in this deck and it's super budget. I think it's like a dollar. All right, number five. Okay, these are taking advantage of our creatures entering the battlefield and getting all those artifacts. So Impact Tremors is a red and a generic. It says, when a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals one damage to each opponent. Yes! Activating that Strephon. And this is going to go easier into the pre-con than most other cards on this list because you don't really have to build around it. I think the pre-con already comes with like 30 creatures or 34 creatures, something like that. So Impact Tremors, you remove something that's not a creature, it's just going to work. It's going to trigger Strephon. It's going to be awesome. Gear, Gearpur Itharid. I don't know how to say that either. All right. It is a three drop enchantment that says tap two untapped artifacts you control. Uh, Ether Grid deals one damage to target creature or player. I really like this card because it's going to take advantage of all of those blood tokens that just sit out there. It, there, the deck also generates blood tokens through other means than just Strephon. So you might end up with just a bunch of blood tokens that you're not doing anything with. And you just start shooting stuff on the board all uh, during your opponent's turns, during your turn, whatever. It's really powerful. Okay, next up we have Extinction. No one talks about this card in this community. I feel like it's a shame. Extinction is a black and four generic sorcery. It says destroy all creatures of any creature type of your choice there are werewolves there are elves there are humans there are all kinds of creature types rolling around out there that just get out of hand there was a oh what's that silly coma deck that coma deck that makes all of those um serpents heck yeah blow all the serpents up thank you all right i love extinction all right number three on our list uh that's not it it's this one Okay, number three on our list. <laughs> we got three cards that do something very, very similar. Uh, Tortured Existence is a black. It says one black. Choose and discard a creature card. Return card, creature card from your graveyard to your hand. This is good. Whenever we discard something big early in the game, we can, uh, to get something smaller, something more useful in the early game, then we can switch them later in the game. Very cool card. It's a one drop. It's not a terribly expensive card either. Byrexian Reclamation is a one drop. Uh, enchantment says a black and a generic. It says pay two life, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Again, this is gonna, these two cards are gonna allow us to get cre big creatures into play off of Strephon whenever he attacks. Also, Fire and Reclamation, look at that heart. It is insanity. Look at that. I mean, that dude is like, like bent over, like he doesn't have a spine or something. I don't know what's going on with that dude in red. Okay, Strands of Night. This one I think got mentioned by the professor about a year ago. Uh, it's a double black, two generic enchantment. It says, two black, pay two life, sacrifice a swamp, put target creature card from your graveyard into play. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. Uh, if you happen to have Urborg in your deck, this is just going to be pure gasoline, pure gravy, gasoline gravy. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I like it. I think you guys should probably look at any of these cards to run in your deck. All right, number two on our list. Patriarchs bidding. Holy crap. Again, kind of like uh, Extinction. This card is just going to do some dirty things. This is going to be way more powerful if you're not playing against people that are playing creature type decks. So this is kind of the flip of Extinction. So you basically make a choice between this and Extinction based on your meta. If your meta is running a lot of creature type decks, you don't run Patriarch's Bidding. But it says, and if they are running a lot of creature type decks, you run Extinction. Patriarch's Bidding is a double black, three generic. It says each player chooses a creature type. Each player returns all creature cards of the chosen type this way from his or her graveyard to play. Okay, so... Or returns them all to play. Okay, so I think that this would pair really, really well with Leyline of the Void if you really wanted to play this card. Leyline of the Void or other things that are exiling people's graveyards. That way, you're the, you've got the only graveyard that's going to be around. Uh, another one that's um, um, Night Hill Spell Bomb would go really well with this as well. And Night Hill Spell Bomb cycles uh, itself. Okay, number one on our list, and again we have two. Two number ones. Okay. The reason why we got another number one is this card keeps popping up in every one of my lists. And I'm a little bit like, come on, dude. I know you're the best card. Go away. Anyway, Expli Exquisite Blood is a five drop, one black, four generic enchantment. Whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is really interesting because whenever your opponents are attacking each other, you're just sitting over there on the sidelines just gaining life. There are infinite combos and we will talk about it. <laughs> But uh, number one, truly on my list, that's not a vampire, is sort of a vampire. <laughs> Soren, Imperious Bloodlord, is a three drop. Four, uh, Loyalty, Planeswalker. It says target creature, plus one target creature you control gains death touch and life link until end of turn. If it's a vampire, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. This is so good. There's, I mean, there's no reason not to be playing it. Uh, plus one, you may sacrifice a vampire whenever you do. Imperious Bloodlord deals three damage to any target and you gain three life. Nah. Negative three, you may put a vampire card from your hand onto the battlefield. Uh, Soren, Imperius, Bloodlord, puts it in play, put really big, dumb vampire in play on turn three. Or turn one with a dark ritual. Seems really good. Really, really good. All right, uh, let's talk about our combo, and no surprises to anyone. Let's melt face. Exquisite Blood says whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. And Vito Thorn of the Dusk Road says whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to infinitely mill or infinitely drain everybody else's life out. And it's not necessarily infinite. It's finite based on how much life your opponents have. <laughs> but anyway, Vito is going to have to be really hard for our opponents to get rid of because Vito is a vampire. And we've got so many ways of getting our cards back. He is so good and he's only a three drop. They just have to be very, very careful that they let Vito live at all for any amount of time because that you might just run out in exquisite blood, go attacking with your vampire Nighthawk, and just murder everyone at the table. It is disgusting. Anyway, thank you so much for coming out. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow or sometime in the future. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Love you. Bye. Button.